Hi, Govan, and welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and in previous videos I have reviewed several of the major adaptations of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, and in this video what I want to do is take all the major ones, whether I've reviewed them or not, and rank them in order of fidelity to the source material. Now, I'm not counting you know, really obscure, unknown adaptations. There's a Russian adaptation of Lord of the Rings. There's a 12-minute ver version of The Hobbit. There's weird ones out there. And, of course, I'm not covering anything besides The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings because there's just not enough of them to really compare to others. Although the BBC did do radio adaptations of Smith of Wooten Major, uh, Leaf by Niggle, and Farmer Giles of Ham, which may be of interest to some of you. Uh, but I'm just going to be focusing on The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and the major, major adaptations of those. And I'm ranking them by fidelity to source material, not production quality or anything else. So when I rank some of them higher than others and you're like, but the acting in that one is terrible, that's not what I'm talking about. So with that said, let's get started. Now at the bottom of my list and in the worst possible place is Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy. Now, I'm not blaming Peter Jackson, I'm just calling it Peter Jackson's trilogy because he directed it and that's just the easiest way to refer to it. Um, but the Hobbit trilogy, when I first saw the first movie, I was very hopeful that it would actually end up being very true to the source material because they did cover things in that movie that I thought would be left out, like the Stone Giants and the Misty Mountains, for instance. Unfortunately, as the series went on, you ended up with the Tauriel love triangle thing, or not, well, kind of a love triangle, I don't even know. You've got, you know, throwing Legolas in was not a huge deal to me, but adding him as a, you know, another prong of that triangle and all the things that he ends up doing, and there's just so much stuff they added to the movie. And to top it off, even the points where they are relatively close to the source material, they change just enough that it's it kind of undermines the the real heart of the story. Bilbo has no character arc, even though most of the things that he does are kind of the same as the things that he does in the book. The way it happens changes the nature of it so much that Bilbo's story really fundamentally is just not the same in the movies as it is in the original story. And so for those reasons, the Hobbit trilogy is at the very bottom of my list and lives in infamy, and I can almost not be made to watch them anymore. A step up on my list, and one which I enjoy a lot, even though it's not the greatest in terms of fidelity to source material, is the Rankin-Bass Return of the King. There is a sense in which the Rankin-Bass Return of the King is actually very faithful to the source material, in that it doesn't radically alter very much of the story, but it leaves out a tremendous amount of material. It still does a really good job telling the story, but there are some significant changes in the amount of material that gets left out. For instance, we know almost nothing about Aragorn, and, you know, growing up, this was my first introduction to The Lord of the Rings, I almost knew nothing about Aragorn, because there's almost nothing about Aragorn in the movie. And so, and you even get things like, you see what I presume is Faramir sitting next to Eowyn on horses when Aragorn rides into Minas Tirith. You don't even know anything about Faramir, so it's like this guy who's sitting right next to Eowyn who appears to be significant. Who is he? I mean, now I know that he's probably Faramir, but in the context of the movie, you wouldn't know that for anything. So, just for the sheer amount of material left out of that story, I have to put the Rankin-Bass Return of the King pretty low on my list. Next up from the Rankin-Bass Return of the King, we get Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. The Lord of the Rings trilogy I really enjoy. I do have my beefs with it. They changed Faramir's character in ways that are frankly criminal. Uh, but by and large, I really enjoy the movies, and for the most part, they are relatively faithful to the source material. You know, all the adaptations make some kinds of changes, and the changes here, some of them are bad and fairly significant, but most of the story is there, most of the characters haven't been completely ruined, some of them have been exaggerated or things like that, but it's, you know, overall, the meat of it is still close enough that I consider it fairly faithful. 
Now you'll notice we're only three up on the list, so it's not that faithful, but it gets better from here and also worse from here, depending on how you look at it. So let's see how that goes. Next on my list would be the Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings film, which, like the Return of the King that Rankin Bass put out, leaves out a large amount of material, but it actually covers more material than you would think, given the time span of, you know, the running time of the movie versus the amount of the story it actually covers. And to the extent that it covers the story, it actually covers it extremely faithfully. So we skip a lot of material, for example, Frodo and Sam and the Merry and Pippin, they don't really have any adventures other than one encounter with a Nazgul uh, between leaving the Shire and making it to Bree, which is quite unlike the book. And the way that they leave the Shire is very different because Merry and Pippin are with Frodo and Sam the whole time, which is not the way the book does it. But apart from that, once you get to Bree and they meet Strider and, you know, things pretty well stick to the book you know, other than leaving out a few details here and there. It's extremely faithful in its adaptation. It just leaves out a significant amount of stuff. It's much more faithful than Peter Jackson's version. For example, Strider is actually like Strider in the book. And, you know, you get Legolas instead of Glorfindel rather than Arwen instead of Glorfindel, so that's kind of a wash. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that they do in the in the Ralph Bakshi film is pretty much, you know, I mean, you could take it directly out of the text and put it into Ralph Bakshi, and there it is. It's like you skip a few things here and there, but, and a lot of the stuff that gets skipped is Frodo and Sam's journey, that after they leave the Fellowship, they really crunch that down into almost nothing, except a couple of scenes where we get to see him talking, whereas the rest of it gets a lot more of the focus. But they cover a surprising amount, and they do it really faithfully to the extent that they do do it. Now we're getting into the really, really faithful stuff here. And now we get to the BBC radio adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. And I've reviewed this one before, so I can link to well, all the ones that I've done specific review, reviews for. I'll link in the description below. This is one where they covered the material in a pretty faithful way, not perfectly. I mean, it was definitely a adaptation, not an audiobook type thing. And they changed some things that I thought were kind of annoying. They did skip over Bombadil, which I was disappointed in because one of the the final one on my list is actually one that actually covers Tom Bombadil. Um, so that was disappointing to me. But most of the material they include is very faithful to the to the book. And they even include, and this is where they get some kind of bonus points, material from the unfinished tales uh, or, you know, maybe maybe just the appendices really is a fair way to put it. But they cover some of the material that, you know, Tolkien didn't put in the main story, but covers in other ways, talking about, like, what the Black Riders were doing while they were searching for the Shire, you know, events that happened kind of off stage, as it were, those get incorporated into the story, which kind of gives it a little bit of bonus points, in my opinion, because it's, you know, these are things that Tolkien did right were part of the story. They just weren't part of the story as told in the main narrative. So that was also really impressive. And as a general rule, the characters are all on point. They're all pretty much as they're supposed to be. So this one ranks pretty high. The only reason the BBC Lord of the Rings production does not rank quite as high as the next one on my list, which is the Rankin-Bass Hobbit film, is because of the things that they do leave out. You know, like I mentioned, that whole Tom Bombadil, Old Forest episode, all that gets left out. The Hobbit by Rankin-Bass does leave out a few things, like Bayorn and Bilbo's, you know, dealings with the Arkenstone. Those get left out. But apart from those two major things, almost nothing is missing from the Rankin-Bass Hobbit. And so even though it's a really short film, it actually covers almost the entire book. It does it in really short fashion, but it's also very true to the original story in almost every way, in spirit as well as in letter. And so the Rankin-Bass Hobbit, to this day, is one of my favorite adaptations of any of these things. And, you know, I would happily watch that almost any time because it's well acted. I love the art style. 
I mean, I grew up with it, so that's probably somewhat biased, but at any rate, it's done extremely well. It does leave out a couple of minor things like the stone giants, but those are like brief interludes that almost do nothing for the plot anyway, so I don't really mind that quite as much. That's why it beats out the Lord of the Rings by the BBC, but there's one. One adaptation that is almost perfectly faithful to the source material. And that, of course, is the Mind's Eye version of The Lord of the Rings. I am fairly certain the Mind's Eye people did a, a version of The Hobbit as well, but I cannot remember for the life of me how that went, or even if it happened, because it's been a long time since I've listened to it, if it was. Uh, so I'm not counting that one just because my memory fails me. But the Mind's Eye Lord of the Rings series, which was done as another radio ap adaptation on the uh, NPR in America, that is practically a dramatized audiobook. You have a narrator who reads the sections that are not, you know, actual dialogue between characters. Now, this is, you know, th this adaptation is the specific reason I mentioned earlier. Just because the acting is worse doesn't mean it's a it falls lower on this list because this is the one where the production quality is arguably the lowest. You know, the voice acting on this one, some of it is almost silly. Some of the hobbits sound like girls or very little boys, which in a way is kind of accurate because one of the things that we do get out of the Lord of the Rings is that is that the hobbits have high voices. But the main point is this adaptation has literally all of it. It includes Tom Bombadil, the old forest, Barrow Whites, all of it. Everything is in this adaptation. It's not literally word for word straight out of the book, but it's darn close. And the level of fidelity to the source material is one of the reasons why I would still happily listen to this one if I had a copy, <laughs> you know, just any old time, because it would be a way of getting the story told to me without me having to sit down and read it. Because these days, if I'm trying to read, it's almost always at night, and I have maybe 10 to 15 minutes before I can't hold my eyes open anymore. Uh, I do enjoy reading at night, but it would be nice if I had another way of enjoying the story so I could enjoy it you know, during the day when I can really pay attention to it. But the Mind's Eye Lord of the Rings, or NPR Lord of the Rings, however you want to find it, that is almost perfectly faithful to the original source material, and so it takes top spot on my list. So, hope you enjoyed that video and got something out of it. Maybe there's some adaptations on here you weren't familiar with that you might want to go look for for your own benefit. And, uh, you know, if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, share it around. You can follow me on Twitter at JRRTLore for some occasional Tolkien-related trivia questions. I'm also on Odyssey and Rumble as YouTube alternatives, and I have podcast versions of these videos going up on all the major platforms. And of course, you could support me at Patreon, and to subscribe on YouTube, don't forget to click that bell icon so you get all the notifications. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namadier.